Hey guys, gals and gamers, Gaming Christian here. Today, another video game review for you, and it is Ghostbusters. Now, this is a personal favorite of mine, and after doing this stream, you know, by the way, if you haven't watched it, definitely check out the links, uh, you know, especially the first part there at the top. Um, I decided to do a review on the game. Now, if you're one of those who doesn't want to watch it because of spoilers, then this is the review for you, as I don't spoil the game in my reviews. I give you good and bad, and then you guys can make your own decisions. Now, if you are new to the channel, how do I do my reviews? Five good, five bad, one being the worst, five being the best, and it's a 2.5 is the average. And of course, if you haven't yet, make sure you hit the like and subscribe button. I love it when you guys subscribe to my channel. Thank you all so much for those who have subscribed, and make sure you definitely check out more of my videos and my content down below. So with that being said, let's get to Ghostbusters. So at number five, the four, let's get it out of the way, the four original Ghostbusters are back with their likeness and fully voiced by the actors. Even people like Janine and Walter Peck are back and voiced by those people as well who, were, who they portrayed in the movies. Only one who isn't back is the original mayor, which is sort of a shame, but it's not really a huge deal breaker for me. So I decided to put all these together since these are character issues instead of just making them like one, two, three, like separate posts, just put them all together. So one of the worst things about this entire game is that we get no real mention of the two biggest side characters, Dana, you know, he, she's mentioned a little bit here and there about her apartment and da 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 da, da but nothing really major, and Louis Tully, who isn't mentioned at all. Now, to be 100% fair, Rick Moranis, the character who portrayed Louis Tully, was retired from acting, and Signore Weaver, who originally refused the role, wanted to come back when the original cast was coming back, but it was, you know, too little too late. Still, it would have been great to have these two characters back in this game, even a voicemail or like on the answer machine, that would have been great. Also, let's talk about the rookie. You play as him, but he has no voiceover work, even though you can clearly hear him yell, scream, grunt, you know, make other noises. You know, so they should have given him at least a couple lines. Lastly, and the biggest one in my mind, was Bill Murray. Not sure why, but his performance in this isn't the best. Now, in the movies, he was a playboy for sure. But he was also very intelligent, business smart, and didn't treat everything like a joke. He did have his funny moments though, but he didn't treat everything like a joke. Here, almost everything he says is a joke. And most of the times, it's not funny. He comes across as an idiot and a whiner, and you get the idea that he's sort of bored of being a Ghostbuster, and only does it because of either fame or money. Number four, guys, for good is a, it's got great gameplay. This had to be every kid's dream to be an actual Ghostbuster. And the gameplay does a great job of it, from using the PKA meter to find ghosts, cursed objects, and to scan ghosts and items, the traps, of course, trapping ghosts, and of course, the, the biggest thing, the Proton Pack. Gameplay is easy to catch up on and fun. This is something that will never get old, even with it being very basic and simple. So this is more of a nitpick, if I'm being honest, but I would have loved to have had this game be more open world or open New York. You know, you still keep the same story, no doubt, but it would have been great to have side quests in this and to hypothetically get an Ecto-1 and travel to different locations in New York to go ghost busting and then come back and being able to say hypothetically upgrade Ecto-1 or who knows what else. I felt there was a lot missing from this game when it came to that, but no, the game is pretty linear, and that's unfortunate since there really isn't anything else to do in this game other than the story. So here you get to play as a brand new character, known as either Rookie, Cadet, Hoss, whatever, and it's kind of interesting to see the Rookie get thrown right into the deep end, sort of speaking as his first real big battle is the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man. And you know, he's the main enemy from the first movie. Plus playing beside the original Ghostbusters did give me a huge nostalgia feeling as it almost was surreal that I was teammates with characters that I grew up watching. It was kind of interesting and really great. 
So unfortunately, the nostalgia sort of wears off quickly when you realize that the dude you're playing is kind of bland. He doesn't really have any personality, and with him not having any voiceover work, he's forgettable. Also, let's not forget that he's not even in half the cutscenes. Like, where does he disappear to? Is he just waiting patiently in the car? Is he getting coffee? Like, what is he doing? If you took him out entirely of the game, he wouldn't be missed. He doesn't add to the story except for the first few minutes, and after that, the story quickly changes focus to Elisa, and the rookie kind of fades into obscurity. He's there, but he's not really required to be there. Oh, I love the weapons on the pack in this game. <laughs> they all have their purpose, and they all serve to help the rookie. You survive. You have four options, which are all fun to use. From your typical stream, to the stasis stream, to the slime blower, and my personal favorite, the Melson Collider. Which is sort of like having a machine gun. I, I love using that thing. As soon as I got it, I switched over to it a good portion of times. You know, what's that old saying? Busted makes me feel good, and these weapons on, you know, being able to switch on the fly and use different ones. Oh yeah, this is so much fun, and seeing these new weapons and being able to use them, tons of fun. So one of the biggest disappointments I found in this game is that even though you can level up your pack, which is fine, I love that idea, but after you unlock everything on the pack, there really isn't anything else to do with the money you collect. You can't upgrade your guy, get him new haircuts or anything, you can't upgrade Ecto-1, you can't even get Ecto-2. There's pretty much nothing to do with the money you get. It's just, yay, I'm rich. Whoopie doo Well, there's a reason fans consider this the third movie, and it's for good reason. The story in this game is fantastic. It takes into account the two movies and plays off them. More the first movie than the second, but the second movie is still referenced in a big way, such as the black slime, the slime blower, and Vigo, you know, the big giant painting. But this is a story that could have been made into a movie very easily. If you aren't huge on playing the game but want to watch it, definitely check out my live stream as you get the full game. But if you don't want to hear me talk or you don't want to see me, there is definitely clips and there's definitely videos of just the entire movie itself on YouTube. So definitely check that out. So yeah, there's no real re replayability in this game unless you want to do the unlockables. I like playing this game once in a blue moon, but not to play constantly just to get a new suit or something like increased health. Only one that is really inter I'm interested in is invulnerability. But to get that, you have to achieve 100% completion in, you know, throughout the whole game, meaning you have to get all the arts, all the scans, everything. So unless you're a big trophy hunter, you're not gonna really care about any of that stuff. You know, you play it once and you wanna play it again, go for it, but nothing's gonna change, nothing's gonna be different. It's still the same story over and over and over again. And like I said, the story's great, but with no real big options, no real big changes, yeah, replayability kind of goes down quite a bit on this. All right, everyone. So my score, it, and even though this is a favorite of mine, this is going to be a 3.5 out of 5. The reason why is because as good as the story is, and as sort of great as the gameplay is, there is a lot of issues I do kind of have with this. Um, I don't like the fact that you do play as a rookie, which is fine, but he kind of plays no role. You take him out of the whole game, he... You know, you wouldn't miss him. He wouldn't really be a part of the story. He doesn't really fill a role. Um, it's, yeah, he's just kind of there. I mean, you play as him, you play as him and that's it. You know, he's just there. I love the voice acting. Most of it is great. Um, Bill Murray, who I am a fan of, I almost seemed like he wasn't interested in doing this. It almost seemed like a paycheck for him. He, he, it just, he just didn't really set the tone right. Um, everybody else though, they, they all did a great job. So yeah, I can in good conscience give this an average score because it's above average game. Uh, 3.5 fits that mark where it's above average game. It's a really good above average game. I highly recommend it. Uh, this is considered the third movie by a lot of fans and I'm one of those. I believe this is probably one of the best Ghostbuster quote movies that you could ever watch. 
Highly recommend you guys check it out. Again, if you want to check it out, uh, definitely check out my live stream as I go through the whole game, you know, from beginning to end. But if you don't want no commentary, you don't want to see me, there are other YouTube videos that do this. Overall, great game, highly recommend it. But just be aware that there is some issues, small ones, but there is some issues. And yeah, take that, take that with, with, with what you will. That being said, make sure you like, subscribe to the channel there at the top. Also follow the cross here. And we got some more Happy Gaming podcasts for you, as well as some more exciting news coming up. So stay tuned for that. Take care. God bless. And I'll see you guys on Sunday. Peace.